Hey guys, what's happening? So, I had this Makita battery for over 10 years, and it finally actually started giving me some rejections on the battery charger, and I thought I would take it apart before it's totally rejected. So, as far as I, can, I remember, um, or even the way I read online, is that if it rejects it three times on a charger, there's an internal chip that will actually permanently reject the battery. Like, it enables some kind of bit, probably on the processor, but there's probably some kind of chip on the, on the motherboard uh, that permanently rejects the battery. Um, and sometimes what happens is if you don't use these batteries for a long time, they'll slowly discharge because um, on the, it's, it's kind of like a slightly, it has like a parasitic draw. Like the, the processor on the, I'll take it apart, but the processor on the, on the battery will slowly draw over the battery, draw down the battery over time. So uh, before I even, hopefully it might be too late already. But maybe I can take this apart. I'm going to check the individual cells. And I do actually have extra cells to take from this other battery that finally failed. I have bad cells in this thing. Um, is uh, check the cells, but I can also manually charge the battery. Um, because it's even like a modern like car charger. Um, that it won't even... If, if the battery voltage is too low, it will automatically reject it just based on how much voltage is on the battery. All right, so you need a tamper-resistant uh, TR10. So tamper-resistant is the actual one with the hole in it. So it's just a torx with a hole in it right there. Let me show you what this thing reads right now. Get my negative in here. That should be positive right there. So the 16 volt. So, um, a couple different things I could do. I could actually just hook up my charger straight to this thing, these, these clips right here, and charge it that way. But before I even do that, like I said, I want to take this apart and I want to check the individual cells. The see it's actually mainly just one cell that's weak or off. Uh, and then basically replace that cell. Yeah. That cell split right there. Alright, let me take the tabs off. Sorry, I can set my tripod and be easier. <laughs> so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Alright, so I'm going to go back. And it's even just like sort of like a... So you have a positive and a negative side. So typically that little stripe is the positive side. So it seems almost like a, like a double A battery. So let's go uh, positive, negative. I'm just gonna go through and test the individual cells. I'm looking for just a, like a weak one. And, or it doesn't matter, you're gonna get either negative or positive. It doesn't matter which way you go. See negative. So, okay, so there is, there is a weak cell right here. So, I'm going to get it. See, that's good. Let me just see if get in there. So, this is definitely a weak cell. So, oh, there it goes. Uh, Alright, so I noticed that the cell that has a little corrosion of the one that was kind of intermittent. So, I'm going to try to clean that corrosion off there and but I am getting good, uh, it is welded pretty good on the actual battery itself. So that could have been actually the reason why it was intermittent. Because I was actually touching the corroded part of the metal. So I'm going to try to clean it up real fast. A little contact cleaner here. And then I also have a deoxid too. Alright, so I'm going to hook up to my uh, power supply right there. So I'm going to bring this up to 18 volt. I'm going to try to bring this as close as I can to 18 volt. So right now you see that I'm pulling no, no current. And double check and verify <laughs> just to make sure I had that backwards. Make sure you check the polarity again before you hook this thing up. We're going to hear it. Feel a big spark. Okay, this is the ground side. This is the positive side. So if it was the opposite, I got to get a negative on my multimeter right there. See right there? Okay, right, so I know the ground is this side. Right there and there. And before I hook it on there permanently, so as you can see, it's definitely not the best way of doing it because you're not, uh, normally when you charge a lithium battery, you want to, uh, there, there's a balancing. So this is actually a balancing lead. So this is actually, uh, can, can be dangerous. Just check your cells, make sure you're not 
pulling too much amperage right now. I'm pulling 1.4 amp. It's not a lot. I'm gonna check the cells. You can see it actually can't pop if you overcharge them. Okay, so you can see that the battery's charging because this actually, the, how much it's drawing will go down. So originally it was 1.4 amp. Now it's down to 900 milliamps. So well, what I'm trying to do is get this thing as close as I can to 18 volts. That way I can hook it back to the charger and hopefully it won't get rejected. Oh yeah, so when you get a rejected battery, I mean, each charger is different, but most of the Makita ones I've seen, are, uh, you'll, you'll be flashing red and, uh, red and green, and that means the battery is rejected. So I've already gotten two of those so far. So as far as I can remember, the third one is actually, if it fails three times, then it permanently deactivates the battery. You know, if this thing actually does get rejected, I did actually make a video a couple of years ago about these little bootleg boards. You actually can buy these bootleg boards and it bypasses the function of the uh, the chip right here, like the deactivation chip. Um, but I'm always a little bit nervous about these things just because um, I don't know how well they balance. So, um, and when you're charging lithium ion batteries, you're supposed to be balancing them. So, um, all right, still going. Mm, hardly pulling any uh, current now. So, probably gonna go in about 10 minutes. But the thing's not overheated, so we're looking good. All right, so we're hardly pulling any more current. So I'm just gonna turn this off. So I'm gonna grab my multimeter. We're gonna hook it up again. See what uh, see where we're at, and then I'm gonna come back and check it probably about 30 minutes later. And uh, try to throw on the charger here. All right, so we're at the charger. Let's take a look. Positive and negative. 18 volt. So I'm gonna check it again in about 15 minutes. Let the surface charge wear off, and then uh, pop it in. I'm right, so gonna give this one last go. Check our voltage, still looking pretty good. All right, here goes nothing. Looking good. God, I wish you could have seen it fail. So I guess you're just gonna have to believe me. But yeah, I got the double flashing light twice. But it's like even like a, like a typical car battery charger now, you know? If the voltage is too low on the battery, it tries to fail the battery. So even like the modern uh, car charger, you know, if the, your car battery is too low, it will reject the battery. Um, that's why sometimes you need like a, like a dummy charger to uh, get the things back in your range so it doesn't get rejected. So yeah, if you have one of these uh, Makita batteries and uh, you get a couple of rejections, you make sure you pull it out fast, do a manual charge on it if you want to recover this thing. So looking good. All right.